Millions of viewers know Linda Hunt as the indomitable Hedy Lang on the CBS procedural NCIS Los Angeles. But there's plenty more to know about this distinguished actress who's had a long and varied career on stage and screen. Keep watching to witness her stunning transformation. Linda Hunt was born in 1945 in New Jersey and raised in Connecticut by her mother Elsie and father Raymond. When she was just six months old, her parents began to worry about her as she wasn't developing motor skills at a normal rate. Doctors predicted that she would need to be institutionalized. Elsie and Raymond used books and theater to encourage Linda's development, and her motor skills were almost normal by the time she started school. Alas, she struggled at school, but her parents were determined to give her every possible chance in life. They even hired her a private acting coach and sent her to an excellent boarding school. As Hunt told The Bulletin in 1991, I was so lucky my parents were encouraging on every level. What do you think your parents would think now? They'd be so happy that I'm earning a check every week. The support from Hunt's parents was certainly a blessing, considering the struggles she endured due to her short stature and learning difficulties. As she revealed to the Bulletin, I was totally alienated by school almost from the first day. I had a bad experience with a teacher and was made to feel stupid. I felt bad that I didn't fit in. While the bullying Hunt experienced was difficult, it also gave her a unique kind of determination. As she explained to the Daily Beast in 2017, I was a very determined kid. This happens to kids who are different in any way. By the end of high school, Hunt was diagnosed with hypopituitary dwarfism, a condition that doesn't allow the standard amount of growth hormones to be released in the body. Hunt's love of acting in the theater developed from an early age. One crucial bit of inspiration flew in when she was eight years old and her parents took her to see Peter Pan on Broadway. As she recalled to the Bulletin in 1991, Mary Martin, who played Peter, was astonishing in her belief in the world she was creating. And that was fascinating to me. She had the power to make others believe what was in her mind. Hunt then decided that she would devote her life to the stage. As she described it, she wanted to become a high priestess of theater. In 2013, she talked with CBS CBS News about Martin's Peter Pan performance, as she noted, it was bigger than life. In some sense, I longed to be bigger than life because I wasn't. When Hunt told her parents that she wanted to act professionally, they were supportive but also a little anxious, as they assured her that she should also have a backup plan. With that in mind, her father encouraged her to study directing and get a teaching degree. After studying acting throughout high school, Hunt moved to New York. She knew that she was passionate about theater, but she wasn't sure about where to begin, and what followed were a few difficult years. She felt so lost that she didn't even try to act professionally. As she told The Bulletin in 1991, that would have meant getting an agent and going on auditions. I wasn't capable of doing any of that. It was truly emotionally beyond me. Hunt ultimately spent her early years in New York finding a community of friends and doing some backstage work at a theater. She was also undergoing a range of treatments for her dwarfism, none of which proved successful. Eventually, Hunt began to question herself and wonder if she had actually pursued the right path, and she even moved back in with her parents to regroup. That move back home initially felt like an admission of failure, but it ultimately proved to be just what Hunt needed to regain her confidence, as she met up with her old acting coach, who rekindled her childhood love of theater. As she explained to the Bulletin, my acting coach reminded me again about the importance of acting in my life and the knowledge that this was my gift. I had lost myself for a while, and that awareness gave me back to myself. Soon, I was sending out resumes and reading for parts. Once Hunt really began to pursue an acting career, opportunities started arriving pretty quickly. In 1972, she appeared in a production of Hamlet in New Haven, Connecticut. What followed were more theater roles in plays written by such luminaries of the stage as Eugene O'Neill, Tennessee Williams, Bertolt Brecht, and Anton Chekhov. She even won two Obie Awards and picked up a Tony nomination. Hunt was clearly well-suited for a career in theater. Her years of stage acting taught her a lot, especially when she worked with Austin Pendleton. As she explained to Bomb Magazine in 1986, Austin has a finely developed sense of being in the present on stage, using everything that is happening to you and editing nothing. She further explained that she learned to stop organizing her thoughts and just let everything that happened inform her performance. As she recalled, Austin taught me that all of the stimuli, everything that you are vulnerable to when you're out there, has got to be taken in. If you spend any energy keeping it out, you're dead. Alas, in between her stage roles, Hunt often found herself dealing with rejection and disappointment. Sometimes it got so bad that she had to collect unemployment. As she told Bomb Magazine, it was a time in my life when I came very, very close to some remarkable opportunities and they got away from me for one reason or another. In 1982, Hunt took on a breakthrough film role when she played Billy Kwan, a Chinese-Australian photographer, in the romantic drama The Year of Living Dangerously. 
as she recalled a few years later to Bomb magazine, "...when I read The Year of Living Dangerously, I had to do it." It's quite possible that if the film were made today, Hunt wouldn't be cast as Billy, as she was playing a character of a different race. Nevertheless, her performance was widely praised at the time. As Roger Ebert declared in his review, "...this is what great acting is, a magical transformation of one person into another." Hunt ended up winning an Academy Award for the role, becoming the first to do so for portraying a cisgender character of the opposite sex. That triumph catapulted her into the public eye, though fame wasn't something she bargained for. It undoubtedly marked the end of her life as a relatively unknown theater actor. Good luck for tomorrow. You'll need it. Linda Hunt's movie career was really popping in the early 80s when she made her big-screen debut in Robert Altman's Popeye and then followed that up a couple of years later with The Year of Living Dangerously. Soon after her Oscar win, she was taking on more and more major roles in the likes of The Bostonians, Dune, and Silverado. In that latter one, she starred alongside Kevin Kline as a flirtatious saloon manager. Then, in 1990's Kindergarten Cop, she played an elementary school principal holding her own against Arnold Schwarzenegger's title character. What did it feel like to hit that son of a b Over the years, Hunt's screen roles have come to fit into a certain type, as she's played a series of strong, powerful women on TV shows like The Practice and The Unit. As she told The New York Post in 2012, "...people are always casting me for what they call my authority." Luckily, this came easily for Hunt as she developed a certain power to compensate for her short stature. As she put it, "...to get people to take you seriously, you have to come at things with a great deal of strength." In the early 2000s, Hunt's on-screen career wasn't quite as red-hot as it used to be. In a 2017 interview with The Daily Beast, she confessed that she'd become less than thrilled with her work at the time. As she put it, "...I began to get some pretty boring stuff for a while. Children's films, family films, which I never felt comfortable with. I never knew what I was really playing. I was just there for some kind of, oh, let's get Linda Hunt, she'll do anything." Despite Hunt's professional struggles, her personal life was thriving at this time. In 2008, she married therapist Karen Klein, which was the year that same-sex marriage was legalized in California. They'd already been together for many years, reportedly beginning to date back in 1987. As Klein told CBS News in 2013, she was initially attracted to Hunt's fashion sense. As she quipped, "...I was kind of struck by Linda's corduroys." Hunt then chimed in with her own joke as she made sure to note, "...Karen's six years younger, but I forgive her daily. I do. I forgive you for being younger." When Linda Hunt started playing Hedy Lang on NCIS Los Angeles in 2009, she probably didn't realize how career-defining or long-lasting it would be. In 2011, she told The Daily Beast, "...I'm now 66. At this time in my life, that this has come along feels just like a gift." The role of Hetty was the perfect opportunity for Hunt to once again show off her authoritative presence. As Shane Brennan, one of the show's writers, told The Daily Beast, "...it became apparent pretty quickly that Linda was something special and that the audience was responding to her." For Hunt, the role gave her a feeling of retribution after her difficult experiences of childhood bullying. As she told The Daily Beast, "...these days, there are some teenagers out there who actually think that what Hetty is doing is cool and what Linda Hunt is doing is cool. I love that." Hetty's a rock star. Linda Hunt's enthusiasm for acting has never wavered, but over the years, she's begun to prioritize her personal time at home. As she told CBS News in 2013, "...I look forward to a time when I don't have to work anymore, which is close at hand, I think." Less work would mean more time to spend with her wife Karen and their dogs, as well as more time to spend on hobbies like reading, writing, and studying psychology. For Hunt, acting can also be fairly stressful, and after a decades-long career, that has become difficult to manage. In 2011, she told The Daily Beast, "...at this time in my life, I'd rather just not do it. I'd rather be the person who has more time to stretch, more time to think, more time to reach out to other people." I look forward to a time when I don't have to work anymore. Do you? Which is, I do. I really do, which is close at hand. Hunt and her wife share a small but beautiful bungalow in Hollywood, and as Hunt revealed to the Los Angeles Times in 2014, "...I often go to the guest house to practice lines and look out the window of the sunroom and think how pretty it is. No wonder she can't wait to spend more time there." As of 2021, Linda Hunt is still technically a member of the cast of NCIS Los Angeles. But as viewers have probably realized, she didn't actually appear much in season 12. Her frequent absences were mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As Hunt is in her 70s, she was kept separate from the rest of the cast out of health concerns. She was also in a serious car accident a couple years earlier, and she decided to pare back her role at that time to recover. 
With all that in mind, it's no wonder that Hetty hasn't been as much of a constant presence as she used to be. Luckily, the NCIS LA writers found a way around this dilemma. Instead of having Hunt join the rest of the cast on set, they instead wrote a plotline for Hetty that involved her having to call in via video. So while Hunt is still credited as a main cast member, there's speculation among the fans that season 12 will be her last. Maybe she'll finally be able to fully enjoy the retirement she's been waiting for. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.